everyone, Jeremy here from Flatware Creations. Um, I am making some fork hearts today, pendants, where the teeth, where the fork ends wrap around. Um, just wanted to go through real quick the steps. So these are matching, so they're gonna end up the same, same shape. Uh, also a little bit thicker tines. If they're too thin, they're just gonna break. So a little bit thicker tines. Uh, the measurement for this is, let me bring it over here. Kind of cheated and made myself a cheater spot. It's 10 millimeters. And so now I can just push these, make sure they're all four touching and just make a scribe across the line. So we get you back up here. I like to use my fine point Sharpies. And one of these is gonna be the front and the other one's gonna be the back. So you wanna make sure that you get your tines right. So one of these, the lines go across the front. The other one, the line goes across the back. So the front is where the bowl is, and then the back is where the foot is. So, got that one. Let's get this one done. Okay, and you wanna bend. So I have the newest model on here, the 3D. Um, before we had this post on here, this is the last model. And what I would do is I would take, put on my block, put this down and the square would allow me to bend it up. But now, So you can see this piece is round. So that's not gonna help us. Nice part is it comes with this nice stainless steel block. I'm gonna put my stainless steel block that I already had down here. And I'm gonna put this one on top of it. Give myself enough room for the fork. I want to kind of center this block on there and do this so that we can see our line. So there's my lines. Just going to go right there to the line. I'm just going to squeeze down a little bit and bend this right up nice and slow. Here we go. Let's get the other one. And because we marked the correct side of each, this shouldn't be a problem putting them together later on. I have forgotten sometimes to make sure one's on the back and one's on the front. So now with these like this, we can flip them over and we can see what our heart is gonna look like. Uh, here. Now what I have found is that if I take a pair of my flat nose pliers, I can bend these back quite a bit. So still on the side that has the side that has the lines. Just gonna grab them, go down as far as I can, which is normally right to the curve. And then I'm gonna bring it down as far as I can. Do the same thing. Doing it this way keeps everything straight. For the most part. <laughs> we can go back and fix anything. 
So now you can kind of see they're kind of off centered a little bit. I'm just going to take and bring this over just a touch. Okay, so now everybody's straight and we have a loop in there. I'll get this one done. This way I found it keeps it the most uniform. So these guys hook together. Now we just need to hammer these down. And I can probably just take this down a little bit by itself. So for the most part, we're set. So I'm gonna take another little small hammer and just kind of tap these down. I'm just tapping on the points. I want the, the points to be tapered down a little bit. Save trimming later. There we go. Now they slide in and for the most part it's holding each other. And by pushing the points down, we have mostly a clean surface, nice and smooth. I'm gonna take my eight inch forceps, get this all tight in here. And I'm just gonna pinch it right there in the middle. So if you can see that all of these are tight, snug, Brick here. I always try and get, so both the fronts are showing, so I try and solder on the back. So let's get our rosin core solder. I'm going to take and get this couple pieces nice and flat. These don't need to be big, they need to be kind of small. Sorry about the heater kicking on. I normally, I like to do three pieces. All right, so I have it tucked in under here, just a little bit. So you can see the piece of solder right here. I'm gonna go ahead and torch that one. So this guy's in place. And I'm just using my little torch guy here. I'm gonna hold it up because I want the solder to flow down. Start getting, heating up the whole piece. I just want this guy to melt right down in there where I want it. So there it just flowed. All right, let's get our next piece. So on our front side, we have just a tiny little bit of solder there, but most of that's gonna be hidden by these. So the next part, we're going to... I wanna be able to run my fingers across and not feel any sharp spots. Okay, so those are nice and smooth. Now I'll generally take my hammer and get these nice and flat. Just so everything's together. 
and any points that are sticking out a little bit, I'll normally take and kind of push those down. So this is just an, a bolt that I cleaned up at the end. I cut the threads off and I actually use it as a pusher for doing my uh, bezel setting. I really don't want these catching on stuff. So we want to make sure that they're down. Okay, the next step is to get these nice and round. Freehand it. Easiest way to get the bulk of it off is to make a snip. So if it doesn't clip off like this, grab the piece grab the piece you're trying to cut off just kind of grab it close to the to the cut point and it will just break off so we'll do this again save a lot of pressure on your wrists and your hands So this is what we're left with now. Let's go over to the grinder. All right, so now we've got our marks pretty much. We're just gonna take our Dremel. We're gonna soften these edges here. I'm not a fan of tool marks, so I always try and get those off. Just kind of blend everything together. Everything's nice and smooth. Just gonna put it in the buffer here for one second, just to get my marker off. If you don't have a buffer like that, you could use alcohol. Just put it in a little spray bottle, spray it on, it comes right off. This is all just black marker. I've taken off stuff. But the buffer is faster for that. So now we're almost done. We need to make it a pendant. So what I do is I put a hole here and a hole here. So that's my center right there. I'm gonna put a dot here and a dot there. It looks about right, so it should sit even. This is a 1 16th inch drill width. So what we're left with is our two holes. We're gonna take our drum sander again, and on the back, there's these flashing pieces. 
We're just gonna take those off. Yeah, everything's smooth. Yeah. This is another 1 16th inch, uh, just on a cheap journal, diamond bit. Always do this from the back side. Put it through the hole. Make sure you can push straight through. It's gonna help your your uh, jump ring sit right where you want it. So these are 10 millimeter jump rings. And there we go. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. Uh, we'll have a lot more videos coming out soon. We appreciate all of your comments and keep creating.